What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. On today's episode, we're going to talk about some of the comments from Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan in regards to how, to, how, how they see themselves rallying this team as the losses pile up for the Chicago Bulls. We're also going to talk about exactly how far can this Bulls team go if they, don't, if they keep this core together. We'll get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So as many of you guys know, yesterday was my birthday, but more importantly than my birthday, I forgot to shout out on yesterday's episode, Brandon L. Jett, one of the biggest supporters of this channel, was his birthday yesterday as well. Before we do anything else, talk about these Bulls that are losing and under 500. I wanted to make sure that I said happy belated birthday to Brandon L. Jett, my brother, one of the biggest supporters uh, of this channel, as I said, one of the biggest supporters of a lot of Chicago creators as well. So make sure you guys show some love to Brandon L. Jett today, uh, the day after his birthday. My apologies. as I didn't even say my birthday yesterday, brother, but I do apologize for not shouting you out, man. But there it goes for Brandon L. Jett. Now, without that being said, let's get into this, this Bulls team. And so... Some of the comments, one of the things I did not break down uh, yesterday is the comments that Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan had after, after the last loss to the Sacramento Kings, and uh, it was this said. Uh, DeMar DeRozan said that this. That's the beauty of sports. When you're down, how do you respond to it? A true competitor is going to pull through. All these guys show frustration, show anger, and that's a great sign. Now, Zach Levine had this to say. We got urgency. We talk to each other every day. We watch film. We have pride. Guys have individual goals. It's just executing it. We have to find our rhythm. I don't think we're terrible defensively. They're the second scoring regarding the Kings. They're the second score, uh, highest scoring team in the NBA. We held them under their average. We weren't great on offense, and we're playing catch up. Now, here's one of the things that you guys have known. If you've been watching this channel for a while, the one biggest problems that I have with the Chicago Bulls team is that they say all the right things. DeMar, Billy, Vooch. Zach, Jesus, everybody says the right things when it comes to the Chicago Bulls team, but we very rarely see that execution actually translate to the court. Now, one thing with Zach, this, the game against the Kings was Zach Levine's best game this season, right? Now, I do want to give kudos to that. He also apparently was uh, a finalist to be one of the Eastern Conference players of the week. Shout out to all that. That's all fine and dandy. But we need to see Zach Levine be consistent. And so, and one of those things talking about, you watch film, you take pride. One of the things in having pride, we need to see this team having pride. It's all fine to say you have pride, but we don't see it on the court as a team. Zach has moments, of course, that he's had big fourth quarters. I think he had a huge fourth quarter against the Nets early in the season, if I'm not mistaken. I may be off on which game that was. but. With that being said, we've seen Zach, we've seen DeMar, we've seen Vooch, we, but we haven't seen it all together. At the end of the day, it's this. The biggest question surrounding the Chicago Bulls team, some of the biggest frustrations, the biggest thing that plays into the mindset of blow it all up is the simple fact of this core of this team is wildly disappointing for many different ways. DeMar DeRozan, who can be amazing in third and fourth quarters, who a lot of times in games have has slow starts, but it does end up working himself out of it this season. Last season, he was he was way more consistent last season. But again, we all we always knew that DeMar was more than likely not going to repeat last season. We just knew that, right? That's coming in, coming into the season to ask and expecting DeMar to repeat that same level of play was just, it, it was crazy. Now, he can't have the same impact, but may not average the same numbers. And that's perfectly fine. Zach Levine's been very slow. One of the worst shooting starts to to, to a season for his career, uh, as we're seeing from Zach Levine. So yeah, there's there's a a nice sign that that could possibly trend upwards as the season goes, as Zach Levine gets more comfortable. Vooch, we all know with Vooch, sometimes it's the coaching, sometimes it's his uh, 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 reluctance to stay down low or even call for the ball, be more aggressive. At the end of the day, it's this: the, as long as we have this questions about this core and this team. It's 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 going to be hard not for some fans to have this mindset of let's tear it all down. Now, we'll talk about why the tear it all down mindset, despite some fans thinking it's not a it's not going to happen. And B, it's, it's not realistic. And the fact that if you want this team to be competing anytime soon, the tear it all down mindset doesn't doesn't mean that we don't don't need to make some changes. Doesn't mean some acquisitions. Some players may be traded and moved on. Not saying that. But the concept of tear it all down, I tell you what, with the Jerry Reinsdorf own team, uh, with AK and uh, Eversley running the team, it's not going to happen. But this is the, the, the biggest question that we have. If we, if the leaders on this team, 
right? And even this was another quote from DeMar DeRozan. That's for the leaders of the team to do. Band together. It's us versus everybody. Nobody, I'm sorry, this is from Levine. Nobody is going to help us dig out of this hole besides us. There will be tough conversations. Sometimes you need that. And the th fact of the matter is this, right? All that sounds good. But until this, until we start seeing, somebody has to show some edge with this team. We got a team of a lot of nice guys. And, and that's cool, right? As far as like community building, things like that, it's cool. But it, it, like you, we, we've talked about the chemistry on the court is not the same that it was. And no, Lonzo Ball himself is not going to fix that. He helps. He's not going to fix that. It, it, stop that there. But until th these players, right, and, and, and they stand up and they, and, they, and they show some pride. You can talk about having pride, but we don't see it on the court. We need to see results. This Chicago Bulls fan base deserves to see results. We can talk so much. Words only get so much done. It's cool. It's good for an interview. It's good for a soundbite. It's good to break down on something like this. But on the court, when it comes to basketball, we need to see more from this team and this core group. Vooch, DeMar, Zach, they all got to step the hell up and figure out what they want to do, what they identity they want to have, and get some pride about themselves. That's what it boils down to. And then, yes, the role players, Patrick Williams, Io DeSumo, Javante Green, Derek Jones Jr., Andre Drummond, Gorger, everybody needs to step up. And, and you know, I know a lot, I've seen a lot of Bulls fans, too, as well, have this thing on, on Alice Caruso, and you know what, I've broke this down. Alice Caruso is giving his career average, period. It, like I don't know what you, I don't know what you guys expect. Like expecting a player to play outside of themselves is asinine. And and yes, Alice Caruso has been shooting po poorly in some games, but that was never the strength of Alice Caruso. Go and look at it. he's never been a volume shooter. He only averages five shots a game, six shots a game per his per his career. So you don't want to rely on a guy to shoot you out into games for a guy who only takes six shots a game. Caruso's Value has always been the deflections, the defense, the getting out in transition. And he's been doing those things still at a high level. Go and check the stats. Go and check the advanced analytics. Alex Caruso still been doing those things. So, like, at the end of the day, it's this, right? I'm not going to blame Alex Caruso. I'm not going to blame Kobe White. It starts with the three players that you're paying the most money that are supposed to be the core of this team. And if that's not getting it done, some adjustments have to come to that core. And I, hey, Ricky Carroll, I got your voice, man. I'm going to say this to you, brother. I, this is what I'm going to leave this at. When it comes to DeMar DeRozan, everybody who wants to say everything relies on DeMar DeRozan, you don't rely your whole franchise on a, on a plus 30 player who only has one year left on their deal. We know what DeMar can be. But I tell you what, if we're building a team around DeMar DeRozan, that team's going to be, it's going to fail. It's just flat out. That's not what this team's doing. And again, Zach Levine hasn't shown either. I'm just not throwing Zach. Levine and Ebel, that he is at a point to where you can build the team around him. I've always said this. Go back and check that since I started this channel. I think if this team is ever going to be the championship contending level, you're going to need a player just as good, if not better, than Zach Levine on this roster to really push that. And you're going to need a solid team throughout. But at the end of the day, it's this. This team, this roster, this core, if they're going to keep this together, if they're going to want to keep this together, they're going to have to do better than what they have been doing. Imar Rosen has to play defense. And by that, I don't mean all of a sudden he needs to be this lockdown one-on-one -on -one defender, but DeMar DeRozan has had seasons in which his, his defensive rating was, was sub 108. That's, that's not elite, but that is at the level of you're playing at least good team defense. The DeMar DeRozan getting blown off the ball is just a focus thing. That's not an ability thing. That's one-on-one -on -one defense. He's getting blown up off the ball. We need him to play better. Zach has to shoot the ball better. Vooch got to stop being the freaking ho-hum like just just lumber like he's Harry from Harry and the Hendersons no aggression at all from from Nikola Vucevic we need that from you as long as you're going to be on this team and the starting center we need that from this team we need this team to improve we need this team to come together we need whatever it is and if that's not happening AK and Eversley got to look at that and say hey we got to rejigger some things here we got to do something different there needs to be a change made and like I said before I do have that speculation in in the back of my head that Hey, Vooch can be extended at any time. It has not happened. You know why? I like to believe that maybe they're leaving their door open for an expiring contract to be moved. But we'll see, right? We'll see with that. But that is left the question on if the Bulls do keep this core together, just how far can this team really go, right? And the, we know we have the blow it all up crowd. And one of the things that's worst place to be in the NBA and in professional sports in general is the middle of the pack. 
That's one of the worst places to be because the Bulls aren't bad enough to keep their own first round pick more than likely. They're not good enough to really go on a true playoff run. This team just isn't good enough. And it's not bad enough either. Like, this is one of the worst places to be right now in the NBA. But I do want to say this, right? There are a lot of middle of the pack teams right now, especially in the Eastern Conference, that aren't too far off from the Bulls. But again, this is not to throw the Bulls any bell. This is to say that the Bulls need to get their shit together, first off. But let's really look at this team. The Bulls now sit at 9-14 and on the season. They're under 500. They have a 39 uh, win percentage on that. But teams that only have a couple of more wins than them, the New York Knicks, which are still also out to play in, the Washington Wizards, which are apparently going to be without Bradley Bill for a while, are 11 wins. The Miami Heat have 11 wins. The Toronto Raptors are a 500 team at 12 and 12. And the Philadelphia 76ers currently sit at 12 and 12 as well. The Brooklyn Nets, a little bit above that, but they can fall back down there right now. The sixth seed, they sit at 13 and 12, a little bit above 500. And then you still have the Hawks, the Pacers that are higher up, but are still, as far as record wise, not. There has not been, as much as the Bull, to Bulls fans' in dismay, there's not been enough separation from the other teams yet to call it over for the Chicago Bulls. They've shown some flashes. They beat some better teams. We all know this. But if this team can pull it together, if they can, right? I'm not saying that they will. If they can pull it together, there's not enough separation between them and the other teams that are higher up above them to where it's all for not yet, right? There are over 50 games left to be played on this NBA season. The Bulls can absolutely turn it around. But that still remains to the question of, okay, even if you do turn it around, okay, shout out to the Bulls. They turn it around. They, they, let's say they turn the season around. They end up going into the playoffs as the eighth or seventh seed. Let's just say they get up to that by, by some stretch of the imagination. That's what they get up to. How far can you really go with the core that has two, that two of your core members are over 30 in Nikola Vucevic and DeMar DeRozan, right? You have a player in Zach Levine who, while was working himself into being one of the most efficient players in the NBA, he's not that this season. He wasn't that on the back half of last season. We know injuries, back knee, things like that. We know the reasons why. You don't have any right now prospect that is showing you, young on this roster, they're going to make the leap into star status, much less superstar status to really push your team forward in the future that way. Patrick Williams has some star potential. We know that. And again, much to the... The dismay of some Bulls fans know Patrick Williams is not a bust. Ayo DeSumo shown some great flashes. We know what we've seen in Ayo DeSumo at certain times. But again, not somebody that as of right now or yet has shown that they are for sure fire going to be a, at least a star in this NBA league. We have uh, Kobe White. We don't even know what Kobe White is, if he's even going to be a bull, a bull in the future anytime soon. We have Marco Simonovic down in the G League. We ain't seen him in NBA minutes. We got Dalen Terry. He's barely getting NBA minutes. Again, that's not to say that I don't believe in the potential of some of these players, but that's also to just say evaluating this core, this roster. We, we own our own draft picks in 2024, right, next season, and then we own our own picks from 2026 to 2030. So we own our own future as far as the draft for the foreseeable future outside of a couple of years. We do have Portland's lottery protected first round pick this season. And so it, it leads this question, right? If you take a look and as and hopefully AK and Eversley are evaluating this core, you have to take a look and say exactly how far can we go? What are the projections of this roster? Again, two key members of your core being over 30 years old and you're not yet even a surefire playoff team. It's difficult to project that ceiling being anything near a title contending team. Now, one of the things that AK and Everly seem to bet on is that one of these young players were going to make a leap. It has not happened, but a leap from Patrick Williams, a leap from Ayo DeSumo can definitely push you further into that. Or do you do what some Bulls fans and their mindset is, is that you take a look at some of the, your own first round picks that you do own. Do you consider moving those, maybe packaging that with an with a expiring contract, packaging that with one of the younger players to try to move up or maybe get some younger talent that's a surefire thing? They, the Bulls have tons of potential to shake up this roster. They also have tons of potential to where they can wait and see and maybe develop some of these players. But the biggest question with that is, and the thing that I've been saying for so long with this team is that the fact of the matter is, this team has not done a good job at developing. Patrick Williams is still, for the most part, the same player he was his rookie year. Yeah, he's shooting great percentages. I've said, many people said, well, Patrick Williams with more opportunity can be much better. And I do still believe that. I would assume with the, balls in, with the ball in his hand more often could be a very, uh, could give so much more output. But at the end of the day, it's this. 
as Bulls fans are starting to look at this roster and starting to see that, and right now the Bulls sit sub 500, it's natural for most Bulls fans to think, what exactly, how far can this roster roster go? Now, potential is the one thing you can't really bet on. You can't bet on potential. You don't know how it's going to go. Yes, Patrick Williams could make this star leap all of a sudden. Io could make this star leap. Kobe White could all of a sudden be this consistent, amazing scorer off the bench. But there haven't been enough surefire signs to rest easy in that. So, again, I know I've, I've, I'm very vocal. I'm a, I try to be realistic here. When I say the Bulls aren't likely to make a super big move to completely blow up the team, I mean that. But that does not mean smaller moves or what could be looked at smaller moves could have a bigger impact on the team overall. It seems like a lot of Bulls fans are well starting to wake up to the fact that DeMar DeRozan does slow some things down for this team. Is it development? Things like that. Is, is, there are some things. DeMar DeRozan is not a perfect player, despite some thoughts of Ricky Carroll that wants to blame everything on Billy Donovan or Zach Levine. DeMar is also flawed. That is why you can't build your future on DeMar DeRozan. You can do some things now for DeMar DeRozan. But again, and I told you guys this, when everybody was saying the Bulls window is three years, I kept telling you guys that the Bulls window is not based on, on DeMar DeRozan's contract he signed with the Chicago Bulls. But it also seems like, that future, that window for the Chicago Bulls, as much as it looked like it may start getting cracked open, it wasn't open yet, cracked open, has all but closed with the, with the play of this team so far this season. At the end of the day, it's this. Whether it comes through moves out internally or externally, whether it comes through improvement internally, whether it comes from this, this core figuring it out and getting better play, whether it comes from Billy Donovan finally getting to a place of using players in better positions. There's a lot of blame to go around with this team, and we're going to sit with this. Unfortunately, we had this loss to the Sacramento Kings that also coincides with a little bit of break, so it leaves us just more time to sit and think about this team. This team that has to expound so much energy to, come, to try to come back in most of these games against the Kings, against the Warriors. Like, when are we going to have a team that actually plays to the level that this city deserves? It, it, it's one of the worst places you can be is middle of the pack in the NBA. It, one of the worst places you can be is, is too bad to be at the bottom, but not good enough, or not, not bad enough to be at the bottom, but too good as well. Like, it's, it's, yeah, it, this team is in a weird place, right? It's in a weird place. And then not only owning their own first round pick this season hurts as well, because this is a draft where it's, you could. I, I made the comparison yesterday to the 2007-2008 Chicago Bulls. You know what the difference is? That Chicago Bulls team got lucky and got Derrick Rose in the draft because they owned their own first-round pick outright. So even when they did bottom out, right, because that team did go 33-49 and 49 and missed the playoffs, they ended up, that, 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 that lost playoff season ended up being more beneficial to them because they got the first overall pick and was able to draft Derrick Rose. This team has a less than 50% chance to hold on to their own first-round pick. This team, the, the roster construction, weird. The draft assets this season, don't have. It's, it's, it's really frustrating to be here in this place because this team traded, for example, Wendell Carter for Nikola Vucevic to just turn around and use Vucevic in the same way they're using Wendell Carter. Right? And while Bulls fans, oh, the Bulls lost that trade, I have to start saying, in, in, in a lot of ways, yeah, they did lose that trade. They got a better player, Nikola Vucevic, but they still did lose that trade because you gave up assets to just use somebody in a similar way you were using the young rookie to. We could have still had our own first-round pick. We probably wouldn't have drafted Franz Wagner, but we could have had our own first-round pick. We could have kept on our own first-round pick this season. We could have just ran with Wendell Carter, who, if you gave him more opportunity, it's just... This, when you start reevaluating all the moves that led the Bulls to be here to where the future looks bleak, you got to start looking at AK and Eversley as well. And so nobody's abstained. Nobody's, nobody's completely absolved either from the blame and where this team is right now. Hopefully some things start improving. We'll see. Um, I know some people are more hopeful than not. I still am hopeful that this team is going to turn it around this season. I know a lot of Bulls fans heard that, hear that and say, how? Why are you so hopeful about this team? I just am. That's where I sit right now with my team. But we need to start seeing it. And as we go home against the Washington Wizards, we need to win that. that. That game needs to be a win. We deserve for that to be a win. And we'll see if it happens for the Chicago Bulls. But let me know. Air your frustrations all down below. Think about doing a crisis hotline at some point this week as well. Oh, if the, if the, if the game Wednesday is a loss to the Wizards, 
We're definitely doing the Crisis Hotline Thursday, so be on the lookout for that. But that is it. Make sure you're following the show at Bull Central Pod. Make sure you send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end everything on, go Bulls. Love you guys. And make sure you guys see red as well. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. 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 Media.